God appeared in the sky and spoke to the world. Part 1 Daylight seems to be my best bet for travel, as well as recording any thoughts or findings. It's safer this way. I needed to get my thoughts out, and with this, I can keep track of everything and make sense of it. I left St. Louis three days ago, and I think I'm in the middle of Illinois. If I can make it to DC, maybe I can figure all of this out. I'm getting ahead of myself. Hopefully someone finds this, and hopefully things are better. Do you remember what happened? Do you remember the messages? Do not be afraid. I am the one you call God. Similar words were heard all around the globe, with individuals seeing the most popular deity in the region, be it Allah, Vishnu, or Christ. The people flocked into the streets, looking up, convinced the second coming, or their God's first appearance to the world, was upon them. Screams of panic, fear, and even pride flooded the eardrums of every living creature on the planet. As the images became clearer, they soon came together becoming one being, unlike the ones that made it up. Until now, you've divided yourselves into sex, across the globe fighting in the name of one deity or another, but you have all been misled. There is but one religion and one god, and it is me. I have chosen a select few to be the leaders of this religion, and they shall be my voice and have my authority. They will protect you. They will provide for you. They will serve as my force for good. This group has been chosen by you as well, and are now appointed for life by me. The world leaders are now my counsel. Heed their words as my own. As quickly as the images came, they vanished. The chaos that filled the street is comparable to that of a dramatized war zone. Some ran to their houses to pray. Others stormed local government buildings attempting to get answers. Some ran to their fallout shelters assuming the worst. And others... Others decided such a world was not worth living in. I'm one of those people who hid in their shelter. I had enough food and water for one, for a year. Personal protective equipment treated for nuclear fallout, as well as various devices that run on solar or manual power. With everything that had just happened, I thought better safe than sorry. I began cranking the hand-powered radio I kept in there. Searching the stations for some news of what's going on, I found one that was recapping the event. For those of you joining us, visions of various deities appeared in the sky, across the globe today, only for them to merge in flashes of light and appear as one separate figure that claims to be the true god. Sources say that each region experienced a different image at first, that being the image of the most popular deity in the locality. As I checked other stations, they had similar information. Many were speculating that what this could mean for the global economy. What this could mean for the varying treaties and pacts between the nations. And what this could mean for the world, religions, so many have come to believe. Others wasted no time in making themselves clear supporters of this abrupt shift, supporting this new deity in this new world theocracy likely in attempts to gain some minor seats of power. But every single one continued repeating. A week after the power shift, government buildings in every nation were now flying a new flag, that of the council. These buildings quickly became the new churches, as well as meeting places. The news reporters would go on every day about how the council is meeting attempting to make sense of this new world and what is going to happen with the new hierarchy, when an emergency broadcast interrupted the regular host. Attention, this is not a test. Astronomers from around the globe have spotted objects in the atmosphere. These objects appear to be large spacecrafts from an intelligent extraterrestrial species. The Council is meeting now, attempting to contact this species in hopes of learning more. Please leave your devices on for updates. Several hours later, the voice returned. Attention! 
The situation regarding the spacecrafts has been updated. Upon attempting contact with the crafts, the Council has received this message and decided it best to share with the public. You no prisoners. You no quarter. All will fall. The Council has decided that force is necessary and that nuclear weapons are the best solution. The Council has deemed the threat large enough to require force from each nation, so weapons from across the globe will be used. They will be fired three hours after this broadcast concludes. Please use this time to pack essentials and travel to the nearest council building for safety. This concludes the message. With that, the voice cut out, only chiming in every 10 minutes to recall the time. I waited. I wasn't sure how trustworthy this new council was, nor was I particularly eager to be at their mercy in one of their buildings. Just as the voice had predicted, three hours later violent rumbling could be felt. The rockets had been fired. Several minutes later, an even larger rumble occurred, which I'm assuming was the impact. I searched the radio for any live stations, but I only heard static. With an impact that close to the Earth, with that much radioactive power, I figured the radio was out of commission for a while. I waited in isolation until one day after winding the radio up every day for something to look forward to. Hoping for some more information, I heard a faint voice. I picked up the radio, tuned the volume up, and concentrated. Through the static, I could hear a voice. Every lie. Council. Using DC. Between the cement walls and what I presumed to be still large amounts of radiation distorting radio signals, I couldn't hear much more than the occasional word. I had wanted answers. Whether this voice was telling any truth or not, I had to find out for myself. I packed as many supplies as I could, along with the radio and protective equipment, and set off on my way to DC. With the amount of nuclear power used and the proximity to the Earth, the radiation seems to have blanketed the surface of the Earth. Most buildings are still intact, luckily, and basements seem to suffice for shelter and seem to be significantly less irradiated. I'm thankful for the shelters I find with windows, even though they let in a little bit more radiation. There are gray skies most days, with dark nights accented by a radioactive glow on the surface and what wildlife I've seen looks less familiar. I can only imagine what comes out at night. There haven't been many other people, but I've been good at keeping a low profile and not being seen. It's getting dark, and I don't want to risk being seen by anyone or anything. Hopefully I learn some good news, or see some signs that point me towards some answers. Hello everybody, this is Magnetar. This is part one of a three-part series. They are relatively smaller parts, but I think it's best to present them in individual pieces, as the author intended. Subscribe to my channel, embrace the void, and remember, astrophobes be warned. <laughs>